In this series of tutorials, we're going to be looking at using UI Table View Controller to create ourselves a table view to be used in a to-do list application where each row will represent a to-do item. We're going to show you how to populate the table view with data, add items to the table view, as well as make use of the accessories for each row and also headers and footers for sections in order to categorize the to-do items. We're going to look at how we can implement swipe deletion as well as the edit mode for UI table view as well as being able to move cells from one section to another. First thing we're going to start off simple and we're going to begin with just looking at UI table view controller and populating it with data. The first thing we're going to do is create a new project and we're just going to create a single view application and then work from there. I'm going to call the application to do because that's what we're going to be making and for now it's just going to be for iPhone. And create the project and once we've done that the first thing we need to do is go into our view controller and change it from a standard UI view controller to a UI table view controller. Once we've done that we want to go to the main storyboard and delete what is there currently and drag in a navigation controller. You'll see that bit rings in both a navigation controller as well as a table view controller. We want to select this table view controller like so and go to the identity tab in Xcode and change the cut class to our TDO view controller. Okay, and this will now put our main view controller within a navigation controller so we can add um, bar button items as well as set the title. Okay, so we're going to go to our main view controller now, TDO view controller, and the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a property in the implementation file, and the property is going to hold the to do items, so we're simply going to call it items. Going to be immutable array because we want to be able to add and remove items from it as we go along. To start with, I'm going to create the array in view did load, and I'm just going to have a default item in there to start with. So we start off with the to do list. So we start off with an item in the to do list, um, and the items are going to be dictionaries. The dictionary is going to have two keys it's going to have the name of the to do, so I'll call this to do take out the trash, and to do, um, to -do items will also have a category. To begin with, we're not going to do anything with a category, but later on in a later tutorial we will. So by default we're going to put them in the home category, and we have to make a mutable copy of the array we created. This here, we're using the literal, new literal syntax um, for both the dictionary and the array as well. Other thing we want to do here is we're going to set the title of the navigation item, so we get uh, the title in the navigation bar up top. And we're going to call this uh, to do list. Okay. Now, then, because this is a UI table view controller, we need to start implementing some of the table view data source methods so we can actually get some rows showing in our table view. So I'm just going to be, uh, I'm going to write some clean code and so I'm going to use pragma marks to separate off my code. Uh, so this section below here is going to be for the table view data source. And you notice pragma marks actually show up in here. Okay, so the first method we need to implement is number of sections in the table view. As we're not having, doing anything with categories for now, we're just going to have one. And the next thing we have to implement is the number of rows in that section. And we're just going to return the number of items we have, which is given by the count property on the array. Last method we need to implement. The only other required method is self row. The table view will call this method when, when it wants a cell for a row in the table view. Rather than having to create ourselves, we're going to put a prototype cell within our table view here. At the moment, there's already one there. Interface Builder added that for us. And it's just going to be a basic one. So that's all we have to change is the style from custom to basic. And that will give us a basic cell with a single text label. You can also have one which is right detail, left detail, and subtitle. And they correspond to the UI table view cell styles. We also have to set a reuse identifier. So I'm going to call this reuse identifier to do item row. And make note of that. I'm just going to copy it onto the clipboard. Then in our TDO view controller, in cell for row, I'm just going to create a static and a string which is going to hold the cell identifier. And into that, I'm going to put the reuse identifier I set in the storyboard. Then once we have that, we can also retrieve our UI table view cell 
um, we can ask the table view for one and it will give, provide us with a cell which may or may not be reused if there are any available. So we give it both a cell identifier as well as the index path. We need the cell for. And the only thing we're going to set on the cell is its title for now, the text in the text label. Now the first thing we have to do is actually get the item which this row is representing. So we can do that. We create a variable store item, and we're going to access the item at a specific index in the array. Again, we're using the new um, syntax, and the index we want to use is the row, the zero-based index. Once we have the item, we can set the text of the text label property, text on the text label, in the cell to the item's name. And so when we've done that, we can just return the cell. So let's run that and see what it looks like. So here we go, we have it running nicely and we have our take out the trash to do row here. And if we were to add more items to our initial array list, then they would also appear there. Say we had go shopping as well. There'd be more rows and they would be pre-populated pre with the name of the item. So we have take out the trash and go shopping. Next thing we're going to add is we're going to actually allow the user to insert um, some items, some new items on their to-do list. Because otherwise it's pretty useless if you're only, you're only programming a few and that's it. So we're going to add a um, add button up here in the top right hand corner, the right bar button item, and that's going to display an alert view where the user can enter text into a text field and that will add the item to the table view. And how are we going to do that? We're going to set the right bar button item property of our navigation item. And we're going to create a bar button item. And we're going to use one of the system items for this so we don't have to set the title ourselves or set an image ourselves. And we're going to use the system item add, which is perfect for our use. And we set the target as ourself and the selector to be add new to do. Oh, add new item actually. And that, so when the right bar, bar button item is tapped, it will call the add new item method on ourself, which is our TDO view control. We yet to implement that math method, but we're going to do that now. And I'm just going to separate my code off. And we're going to implement that method now. It passes one parameter, and that is the sender, the button, the bar button item that was tapped. So in this method, as I was saying earlier, we're going to create an alert view and display that. So Ty's just going to specify it's a new to-do item. And we're going to ask the user to enter the name of the new to-do item. Set ourselves as a delegate so we can find out when the users tap the done or add button. Cancel, I'm just going to cancel, and the other button is add item. Now the other thing we need to specify is that this alert view needs a text field in it. To do that, we have to set the alert view style. And the alert view style is plain text input. Once we've done that, we can show the alert view. The next thing we have to do is implement the delegate method so that we know when one of the buttons in the alert view is tapped. And as our class is going to be the delegate for the alert view. We have to say that it conforms to the UI alert view delegate protocol. And to that, we just go to the private interface declaration for our view controller in the implementation file. And in angle brackets, we type in the uh, name of the protocol, and that's UI alert view delegate, immediately after the name of the view controller and the two parentheses. Then we can implement the alert view delegate method, and you'll see Xcode gives you completions now. And we want the click button at index one. And we just want to check if the button index is not the cancel button. And if it's not, then that means we want to add a new item. So first things first, we have to get the text field where the user has entered their item name. Let's do that. We just tell the alert view we want to get the text field at index zero. There's only ever going to be one with the uh, plain text input style. And then from that, we can get the item name. That's just going to be the text in the field. 
and then we can create our new item, it's just going to be a dictionary, and by default again we're going to put it in the home category. So the name is going to be the one the user has entered in, and the category for now is just going to default to home. Currently we're not doing anything with the category, but we will at a later date. Once we've created the item, then the last thing we need to do is just simply add it to our array list. And then we can either reload the data in our table view, or what's better and looks nicer is to use the insert item index path method, uh, which will animate the new row in. I'll insert rows index path rather. You see, we're using the uh, array literal syntax again because it asks for an array of index paths. We're only going to be inserting one at one index path, so we can just have one item in, in the array. And in the row it's going to be at is going to be the item count minus one, and the section is going to be section zero. The animation we want is just we're going to use the automatic one and it'll figure out what looks nicest. Now, if we run that, We can tap on the add item button and we'll get an alert view where it asks us to enter the name of the to-do item and say I've got to pick up uh, brother at 5 a 5 p.m. rather, add that item and you'll see it animates in down here. Nice and simple so far and it looks good too. So we can add a few more. By sister's present, add that as well, and it's all looking good and all working well so far. So, the last thing we're going to look at in this part of the tutorial is going to be accessories, accessory types for rows, and how we're going to handle whether or not these to do items have been completed or not. So, the way we're going to do this is we're going to have at the moment we have our dictionaries which uh, represent the item. And they have a name and a category, there's going to be another key in there and that's going to represent whether they've been completed or not. And the value of that's just going to be a boolean yes or no. And when they tap on a row, we'll just toggle that between yes and no. And as a result, we'll change the check whether or not there's a check mark in the row too. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to implement the did select row index path method. Then in this method, we're going to get the item and we're going to make, some, make a mutable copy of it because we're going to make some changes to the dictionary. We get our item at the index, which is going to be the row of the index path. Make a mutable copy. And then we're going to change this. I'm going to set whether or not it's completed to the opposite of the current value. Once we have our mutable copy of the item, we want to get whether or not it's completed currently. And we do that as by completed, we'll get the value of the completed key. And we want to make get the raw value. When we're storing booleans in a dictionary, we have to wrap them in a number, so we have to unwrap them here to get them back to a bool. And then we want to update whether or not it's completed. So I'll set completed, the completed value of the completed key, and it's going to be the opposite of what it is currently. So we can just use the exclamation here, and that will just flip the value. So if this was yes, it'd become no. If it was no, it'd become yes. You see, I've got an error at the moment because I forgot to wrap this in a number, and it's number. And we can do this just by using, again, the literal syntax and using parentheses between the uh, expression, either side of the expression, rather. Now, once we've done this, we just need to update this in our array again. So we want to replace the item at the row, what was there before, with our new item. Now, the only other thing we need to do now is change the accessory type of the cell. So if it was checked already, we want to uncheck it. And if it wasn't checked already, we want to make it checked. So first thing we have to do is get the cell itself. This is nice and easy. Table view gives us, gives us a method to get the row with a certain index path. Once we have the cell, we can set the accessory type. And we're going to use the ternary operator here. 
and terminal operator is basically an if statement on one line. So we can check, we can get the whether or not the item is completed. And again, we want to get the ball value. So this is our condition here. And after this, we put a question mark to signify we're using the ternary operator. Now, if it is completed, we want to set the accessory type to be the accessory check mark. Then we use a colon to say, well, if this isn't true, then we want to set it to accessory none. And last but not least, we just want to deselect the row that has been selected. Now this is all well and good and this will update the current row, but the other thing we have to be aware of is that in self row index path, we're not actually doing any checks to see whether or not the item is completed. Now if you were to scroll out of view one of these cells and it came back into view and it reused a uncompleted cell, then it would stay that way because we're not saying in here, we're not doing a little check to see if this item is completed and if so, make it checked. So that's what we need to do now. The little if statement to check if the item is completed. And again, we have to unwrap that number to get the boolean as a condition. And if it is completed, we want the cell's accessory type to be check mark. And we have to say if not, we want to make it have no accessory. Like so. And now, if we run the program, we should be able to see that we're able to tick off our to-do items. So it checks, it has an error, click again, and it'll uncheck it, and that works for all of them. And you are scrolling back, and it's still checked. Brilliant. So that's it for this part of the tutorial. Next time, we're going to look at deleting rows, and we'll move on to dealing with the categories as well, where it will get a little bit more advanced and complex, but I'll make sure to follow through it all with you, and I'm sure you'll be able to keep up. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next tutorial.